Panasonic Evo 1 offers a lot of different recording formats that you can choose between the size of the frame that you're recording and the format that you're recording in, bit rate and the color sampling and the bit depth. There's an overwhelming number of choices. I'm gonna to try to explain what they are and help you to choose which one you're looking for. First of all, there's two main file formats you can record to. You can record to AVC HD, or you can record to a QuickTime movie. AVC HD is for 1080 or 720 only. It, it's not for 4K, it's not for 2K, it's not for ultra high definition. It's only for 1080 or 720. And AVC HD is very small file sizes. If you have a small memory card and you're gonna be recording hours and hours and hours of footage, AVC HD can be a great choice. If you've got the, the card storage space, I wouldn't limit myself to AVC HD because the other recording formats are higher quality, but AVC HD is a valid choice if you're shooting 1080i or a 1080 24p or even 1280 by 720, 720p at as low as eight megabits per second. So incredibly small file sizes. If you're wanting to take advantage of what the camera can really do, then you generally want to go to the QuickTime Movie recording format. So when you want to choose a recording format, you go into the System Settings menu, System Mode, Main Codec, and there you're going to be presented with a long list of entries with long names, like 422 Long GOP 50M or 400M ALL I. What do these mean and which one do you want? Two things. First of all, you're gonna see codecs that are listed as GOP or all I. They're both MPEG-4 codecs. They're, they're similar compression technology, except long GOP has an additional tool it can use. So the all-I is all intra frames no frame to frame compression it's all each individual frame think of it like a whole bunch of jpeg pictures every frame is its own standalone image the long gop codecs recognize that in video a whole lot of the frame doesn't change for example you're watching this video right now and i'm talking at you maybe this little area is changing a bit maybe this area but the camera hasn't changed this is exactly the same so the long GOP could say, hey, repeat this portion from frame to frame. Don't bother re-encoding and recompressing this entire image every frame. Just copy that. That stayed exactly the same. Or maybe you're doing a very slight pan. It could say, hey, copy this image, but move it over three pixels, you know, and just move it over there. And that gives it a great head start on each frame that it's encoding. So the long GOP stands for a long group of pictures. Up to 15 pictures are all compressed together as a group and it only tracks the changes between the frames. This makes it very space efficient. It also makes it very processor dependent when you're trying to edit the footage. So the main difference between all I and long GOP is gonna be in editing performance and in file size. If you're gonna be recording, you know, you, you're doing a 30 second TV commercial, space is not really an issue. You know, you might go through a couple or, or 10 gigabytes a day. You could keep all that on one memory card. So you're not really worried about file sizes at that point. But what if you're doing reality TV series and you're, you're out on an island for a month, you know, and you got limited recording media, you might want to need the smaller file sizes and get the most efficiency that you can in those scenarios. So the all I generally gives comparable quality to the long GOP at two to three times the bit rate, meaning an all I recording is going to have to take up about three times as much space as a long GOP recording in order for it to be able to maintain as much quality as a long GOP can do. Just be aware of that. However, the all I recording will probably edit easier on your computer. So you really have to try it out before you commit to a format, do some test runs, bring in some long GOP footage and see how it edits on your system. Maybe you got a modern computer with a very fast processor and a screaming graphics card and maybe it's no problem at all. Well, if that's the case, choose long GOP and get the benefits of the smaller file size. But if your computer kind of, you know, <clears throat> it can only play back three frames a second or something like that, maybe long GOP is asking too much of your computer and maybe you need to go to all I. So that would be an example of why you choose between long GOP and all I. 
What about this 422 versus 420? Well, this is referring to actually two elements of image quality. It's the color sampling and it's the bit depth. All the 422 listed codecs are also 10-bit. All the 420 choices are also 8-bit. So when you go to an 8-bit 420 codec, you're compressing less data. It, it, that in and of itself is a form of compression. It's cutting down the number of colors it has to keep track of. It's cutting down the, the amount of color information in half that it has to keep track of. So by throwing away color information and color depth information, there's much less data to deal with. And so you can fit the files in a smaller file size. And you can also maybe more efficiently use your available bits to encode the frames because there's less detail in the image. So based on how much bandwidth you have, you might more accurately compress that. Whereas let's say you had the 422 10-bit version. Well, now you got twice as much color information. There's four times as much shades of gray. It's a lot more data. If you're running at the same bit rate, you have to try to save much more information. Like at 50 megabits, they're, they're both available at 50 megabits. 50 megabits, you have to save four times as much information there in the color and twice as much information in the color sampling. And there's no more bits to go around. So you might have to rob Peter to pay Paul. Maybe your images will look more compressed even though they have more color data. It's a trade-off. The color sampling issue has to do with how many color samples there are per brightness sample. And what I mean by that is, let's say in an image that is 1920 by 1080, we know that there's 1,920 pixels across, 1,080 pixels down, roughly 2.2 million pixels in the frame. That's great, but that's only in terms of brightness, not in terms of color. The human eye is less sensitive to color information than we are to brightness information. So the camera, first thing it does, it throws away half the color. It, that's, they all do that. It's called 422 color sampling. They literally use the same color information for every pair of pixels. And we just don't notice. I mean, it looks pretty good. In fact, if you go to 420 color sampling, it throws away the color information for three out of every four pixels. It uses one color sample for every two by two block of pixels. Now that can't possibly sound like it would look good, right? And yet every DVD you've ever watched, every Blu-ray you've ever watched, every high definition TV broadcast you've ever watched uses this 420 color sampling. It looks fine. It looks good but it's not as high resolution. And there are some cases where it can make a real difference. For example, green screening, where you need precise color information to, to pull an accurate key. Or if you're shooting a lot of contrasting colors, red against green and red against blue, you'll get more resolution, more resolved detail in the image by using the 422 than you would the 420. That's automatic. That's just always gonna be that way. Also, when you're choosing the 422, you get 10-bit color information, 10-bit depth, 10 bits worth of shading. So for every pixel in a 420 8-bit recording, there are 256 possible shades of gray or shades of blue or shades of green or whatever. 10-bit system, there's 1,024 possible shades, four times as many. So the gradations can be a lot finer. You won't see banding, gradient banding, as much in a 10-bit 422. So whenever you can, choose 10-bit 422, either with all I or with the long GOP codex. The way to make that not be a restriction is to use as much bandwidth as you can get. Whenever you can, use the 150 megabit long GOP 422. That's pretty much the best quality recording codec that camera has. Or you can use the 400 megabit all I. Then you're getting all the color information and all the color depth and all the best compression that you can get. That's the highest quality way to go. So if you're recording vlog, I highly recommend you use a 422 10-bit version of the codec, which is either the long dot or the all I. Those are all 10-bit 422. Another way you can go is just not really recording format, but I'm just mentioning it. So you can output raw video out the SDI port. When you enable SDI raw output, you're getting 5.7K images, about 18 megapixels per frame at 30 frames per second. You're getting a raw copy of the data straight off the sensor and it's encoded in a logarithmic format. 
So it's 10-bit log. So you get tremendous shading throughout the entire image. It's, it's like basically having a V-log image, but having raw, uncompressed sensor data and the colors encoded in a V-log color space, color gamma. So the raw requires that you have an external recorder to record it. You can't just plug the raw output onto a monitor and watch it. It doesn't work that way. You need a recorder that's specifically designed to be compatible with the EVIL-1. If you do that, you can get raw output out the SDI at as much as 240 frames per second. So those are the various codecs, recording modes, and how you would choose among them. I hope that made sense. And I encourage you to stay tuned to this channel for the rest of the video so you can learn even more tips and tricks on how to best use your EVIL-1 camera. Panasonic.